Hello and welcome to episode 22 of the James Smith podcast. Again, this one's going into season one. Season two is with guests. And this podcast is about home training. Now, if we go back to the 25th of February, I did a post. It began with me saying, I'm probably going to cop a lot of shit for this. And in essence, I was shitting on home training. I was trying to really tell people about the fact that not many people are training from home. A lot of people exercise from home and they treat themselves like uh, they're a hamster running in a wheel and that they have to burn calories to earn dinner. And I've said it many times before, my fitness power is a fantastic platform for logging calories, but it's not a great place to go to to determine how many you should be having. And the reason being for that is that my fitness power gives you calories that you can eat back and when I, you can use my calculator for free at jamesmithacademy.com, when I give people their calories, it has their training included as part of the deal. And setting a 15% deficit means that if someone misses the gym session, rather than the day being wasted or, you know, there's no point, write it off, start again tomorrow, my academy members understand that instead they realize their deficit just shrunk from 15% to probably 5%. Because very rarely where we burn more than 10% of our daily calories uh, through exercise in the gym. I wanted to shake the tree. And I say this all the time. And what I mean by shaking the tree is that if you're someone that's got a fantastic home training gym set up, and I shake that tree, you remain in it. You're like, oh, James, you're wrong on this one. But that's fine. But for a lot of other people, it's a bit of a wake-up call where they go, yeah, I'm just jumping around my front room like a bit of a cunt. And... Why is, one of the issues that I have with this is that I used to do this. Uh, when I was in my earlier 20s, I did the insanity workout and I was jumping around and I was wondering, why am I losing weight? Why am I not shredded yet? And not enough focus went onto my diet and out of that, I was never really told I needed a calorie deficit. And for so many of us, we are, you know, so focused on getting a sweat on and, and remaining fit. And the underpinning principle that I needed wasn't there. And as I've said many times before, you know, we're all getting so caught up about the method that we're we're undervaluing and overlooking the principle that we need behind all fat loss. And talk about fucking timing, right? So I'm like, fuck home training. Most of you motherfuckers aren't even doing it properly. About a month later, world goes into lockdown with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And times are difficult because with gyms, we don't know when we're going to be able to go back. Uh, or could be one of the last places to really open. And like what we're seeing in Australia, I feel like with the Petri dish of the world where people are using us, they're throwing us, we're the canary in the mine. So if we go back in and we get a rebound or you know a second wave of coronavirus, I feel that the world will just watch us and go, well, Australia did this, so we uh, we mustn't make the same mistakes as them. And we haven't got gyms back, but I'm sure we'll be some of the first people back in there. Now, if it's anything like pubs, clubs, etc., it's more than likely that they're only going to let a certain amount of people into the gym at one point, which is going to beg the question as to what's going to happen with gym memberships. Are gym memberships going to be extortionately more expensive? Is it going to become a place for just the rich and wealthy? If they're only letting in 25% of their members, does that mean that gym memberships are going to quadruple in price? I'm not really sure but it's something to take into account so even those of us that are itching or waiting to get back into a gym environment we have to keep in mind that maybe we might not be in a financial position to go back if that does happen and if gyms are going to pay their staff and turn on the lights and you know have the gym equipped their costs remain the same their members i don't think they're going to go hey guys have this one on us you know it something that's just to keep in mind. So even if gyms were going to get them back in three or four months, we might have to take that with a pinch of salt, which is quite sad. Um, so yeah, the, as far as the market for expensive gyms, if you're in a big chain like Fitness First or David Lloyd or whatever it is, that could be the case uh, unless we get a vaccine by then. What I wanted to talk about today was how the industry has responded. And, you know, I'll probably save a lot of this for my business talks, but, you know, it, it's a little bit pathetic how so many coaches dropped 
everything to to use this as a popularity contest and what they've done is they're like right who can get the most viewers on a live workout i'm going to go live every day and anyone that's gone on instagram now will see that it's literally just live 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 everyone's partnering up with someone and you know the cross-pollinization from that is great but the fitness industry we, we kind of lagged behind a little bit because as i've said a lot of times people's problems have remained the same people are still struggling with their energy balance now it's a little bit harder people still need support and accountability with their training the solutions remain the same the problems are the same the problems just exist in a different location yet everyone changed and everyone abandoned their sales funnels and for personal trainers rather than offering their solutions it just became a marketplace for doing arbitrary free home workouts and the elephant in the room is that the more people you get tuning into that workout the more gravitas it gives that workout someone goes oh well, there's 2,000 people tuning into that workout it must be amazing that must be the best workout there's only 400 tuning into this one so this one must be at least five times better but the dictionary definition of arbitrary is based on random choice or personal whim rather than any reason or system and that's spot on these are randomly made up people are thinking about what kind of exercise selection is going to give someone a fucking stiffy at home and i'm sorry but you know using fucking washing deterrent detergent as a fucking weight or a pot or a pan doesn't quite fix the crux of the issue of what people are facing or what they faced before this pandemic and even this how can we expect one arbitrary live workout to suit the needs of two thousand people watching unless it purely is approached as hey you guys you're fucking hamsters i'm going to provide the wheel for us all to run on so you can earn back dinner from the very bottom up the approach is fucked instead these people could be saying hey guys uh, in this live video i'm going to be showing you how to turn your sofa into a platform for doing easy press-ups on or here's a single leg hip thrust and we've completely overlooked that and we've got a lot of people just jumping around the front room and the issue i have with this isn't the exercising a lot of people like james why are you attacking people that are trying to exercise i'm not i'm just a human being that knows exactly what's going to happen they're going to get bored of what they are doing in the first few weeks oh you know i feel great blah 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 but they're going to get bored humans must progress at things and in jiu-jitsu we have belts the belt system we have stripes on it and having those four stripes something to work towards something to quantify your progression makes us excited makes us proud you know when we uh people that became a garmin wanker after my last podcast named as the most expensive podcast they quantify their progressions their 5k time their heart rate all of these things sleep stats what gets measured gets improved and i just feel that live workouts at home and everyone dropping their pants in a bid to see who can be the most popular pt doesn't do that and people are just going to fall off the wagon so the reason that i'm being so you know controversial with my approach and telling you about this is because i know you're just going to become deflated in a few weeks time we need to make sure that there is a goal in place and that we work backwards from that and one of my most recent podcasts before covid was about this if your goal is fat loss then work backwards create a calorie deficit through management of your calories use my calculator start using my fitness power and start to see these these workouts as something that complements that but also think about your psyche in the future we have something called like a, a well something called a hot cold empathy gap and i speak about this in in book two when we're tired we struggle to think of a time that we had energy when we're hot we struggle to think of a time that we were cold when we're angry we struggle to think of a time that we were calm and when we're motivated, we struggle to think of a time that we're not. And, you know, you, you, you do your first workout, you're like, yeah, I could do this forever. But you've got to think about yourself in three weeks' time when you're bored of what you're doing and there's no quantification apart from, hey, guys, let's see how many high knees you can do in 30 seconds. And you are going to get bored of that. And again, I'm shaking the tree. If there's 2% of you that literally, you know, get moist at the idea of doing burpees at home, then then you can ignore me. But again crossfitters they get a different workout every day and they're not based randomly there's programming that goes on behind the scenes people are you know they name their workouts after name so that people can go back and see how many rounds for time they did you know how many you know whether lifting at rx and all of these things human beings need this when we when we start training and the kind of elephant in the room that we have at home is the limitation of body weight and body weight exercises now you can't do any really pull exercises at home. You can't. And 
what you've got is you've got a squat, you've got a reverse lunge, you can use the sofa for hip thrust variants. Uh, as far as upper body, we've really got as a press up and not many coaches are even saying, hey, look, you could use a table or a bench. The higher you bring your arms, it's going to alleviate a lot of uh, weight through your arms so you can do more. So when we bring a band into the mix or a TRX and, you know, for, imagine this. In the market that I'm in, every fucking dickhead is like, train from home, just use your body weight, let's do a hit. Come on, guys, get in your front room, let's go. But instead of that, I do want to say to people, no, I want you to get some equipment, but that's not for me. I'm not selling branded fucking resistance bands or branded TRXs. Fuck, I don't even make any money if you get an equipment. I want there to be more variation to your exercise. And let's say I give you a band, just one resistance band. And I know a lot of people are talking about financial hardship. I'm not asking you to fucking go on holiday. You know, I'm asking you to get a resistance band. When you use that, you can start to add resistance to your squats, to your lunges, even to your hip thrusts. You can then start to do banded pull-aparts, banded rows, banded face pulls, banded bicep curls, banded tricep extensions. Do you understand there are so many more dynamics to our exercise selection and workouts once you incorporate just the smallest bit of equipment? A suspension trainer that's hanging on my door here. Suddenly we've got, you know, row exercises. You can put your feet in the stirrups for core exercises. You can sometimes mix workouts, but what fucking kills me at the moment is that people are now putting exercises together just for their Insta engagement. And I was calling out a mate of mine the other day. A lot of people thought I was attacking him, but I wasn't. I was like, why the fuck are you mixing a bicep curl and a lunge together? Why? There's no need for that. Just tell them to do a lunge, then tell them to do a bicep curl. Putting the two together looks a bit prettier on your swipe workout. But again, all trainers, this is indicative of what all trainers and fitness people are doing. They're like people at home on their phones. What bullshit can I put in front of them to make them look at me instead of someone else? And we're getting very far removed from the basics and the simplistics of it. And I'm not going to lie to you. I write three new home workouts a day for my academy. Some with bands, some without. Some with suspension trainers, some without. Some with nothing. And the core exercises remain very similar. I don't see a better compound quad dominant exercise than a riff elevated split squat at home. I just don't. And I'm not going to make up some shit so that you can open a program and go, oh, fuck, I've never seen this one before. Mastering the fundamental best exercise is the best. There's no complicating it. Complication and efficacy don't sit on a linear scale that only, oh, the more complicated it is, the more, the better return from it. That's bullshit. That's absolute bollocks. It's the wrong way around. And it's one of these things that people just need to master the basics and getting equipment at home rather than putting it off and I've said this before even if your suspension training is going to cost you a lot of money you buying it now or in two months or in six months it costs the same but like any of you that need a new fucking MacBook or a new laptop or a new iPhone putting it off for two weeks doesn't make it cheaper right ultimately it's going to cost you the same and I want to bring to your attention that gyms probably aren't going to be back as soon as possible because the powers that be are so fucking worried it's very political i'm not an expert in covid i I mention this a lot of the times but if people let them let you back to training or let you back to gyms and there's uh you know as soon as soon as there's a second lockdown or there's a second reflux of covid cases going up they're going to look for people to blame and everyone in a political position i believe right now just doesn't want to be that person they don't want to be the person that has their finger pointed at them and for that reason i think that the the whole gym debacle is going to be pushed back a lot lot further than people realize. Um, So yeah, getting some equipment means that you can work out more effectively. And that also means you can work out less frequently because if you're doing a proper fucking home workout, you only might need to do it three times a week rather than this daily incessant need to exercise, to feel worthy about yourself. Uh, It's one of those things that, you know, do it properly, do it less and then spend some other time doing other things because I've written some articles for quite a lot of magazines during this period where I was like, you don't have to be exercising and training every day. If fat loss is your goal, you need to create the calorie deficit, then you need to complement that. But you don't have to complement it every day because there are other things you should be doing, like getting a step count in. If you're allowed out for one walk a day, it's about an hour and 20 minutes for the average person to the 10,000 steps. Listen to an audiobook, listen to a podcast, listen to this. And then see what works and see what doesn't. And I do feel that manipulation of your calories will be king in that. Now, another thing that 
I kind of wanted to talk about today was it's fine to not be productive in this. And everyone's everyone's thinking that we must be productive. We must be getting the best training. We must be getting the most progressive overload. We don't, but we do need to be aiming towards something, but it doesn't have to be every day. And there should be time to play on your consoles. There should be time to relax. There should be time to study and, and fuck around. But because of that, social media time is, is up. It's a lot higher than it's been for a very long time. Um, what this means is that there's a lot of exposure going on. And this was a problem before, but it's even more of a problem now. If there was someone in ridiculous shape, great genetics, obsessed with their training, obsessed with their diet, no responsibilities, every meal sent to them for free, and they're on the far corner of the planet as far away as possible, you get access to them and you subscribe to them when you follow it. Now, these people are brought to your attention through how other people react to their content. They're pushed to the top of algorithms. And now we live in a time where imagine there was a select few 1,000 weirdos, 1,000 weirdos in the world that are so obsessed with their physique, how they look and how they train, that they look the part more than anyone else. You subscribe yourself to a handful of these and it very much skews what is your perception of reality and what's normal. But you're only seeing their two posts topless a day in their underwear or fucking swimwear and then tuning into their live workout. You are escaping reality of what's normal and you're going to compare behind the scenes. And now that social media time is up, people are more exposed ever to the elite and I feel this is really deflating people with with their progress, with their training. You see some, you know, yoga athlete or bodybuilder or whatever it is, and you're sat at home and you're like, fuck, what's what's even the point? Now, one of the kind of easiest ways that I can explain this is the Michael Jordan, The Last Dance documentary on Netflix is fucking phenomenal. And for any of us that have watched it, we know it's absolutely amazing. And hats off to Michael Jordan, probably one of the best athletes that's ever lived. And it's very inspiring and it's very motivating to watch it, but this is the point I want to bring up. He looks very lonely in that documentary. You don't see his wife, his kids are in it for about 30 seconds. We are so focused on his performance as a basketball player, we can overlook the fact, I have a feeling, not to take anything away from what he's accomplished, that he's a very lonely man, and there's only one thing in his life that makes him happy, and that's winning. I come to those conclusions through his kind of gambling habits and his values and how he reacts when he loses. And from the outside, we decorate an incredible athlete, but we overlook the fact that maybe this guy struggles more than most to be happy. That's why he's so obsessed with his basketball, so obsessed with his winning. He even made up stories to enable him to create angst against players so he could beat them in matches. With this, we need to draw the similar conclusion. A lot of people you follow on Instagram might only draw pleasure from life in how they look with their top off. They may only draw self-worth and self-quantification of who they are as an identity through their performance in a home workout and their physique with their tops off. You as a person, as a listener to this or a watcher on YouTube, you must take into account that maybe there are certain elements to your life that make you happy where you're programmed differently to these people that you're exposed to that there are other things in your life, whether it be children, whether it be work commitments, maybe you don't get paid to take your fucking top off. And when you see these people doing their workouts, you need to understand there's more going on behind the scenes. And with Michael Jackson, yeah, he's wealthy. Yeah, he's decorated. Yeah, he's got six championships under his belt. But that's all you know. That's all you get exposed to in the documentary. We don't know if he's happy in his family life. We don't know if he has any other hobbies that he pursues. There are so many different things and we must take the same pinch of salt with fitness people because some of them are so obsessed with how they look that we are overlooking the fact that they may be giving up the simple pleasures in life. So to compare ourselves to these people is not going to do us any favors. It's not going to improve our situation. We can't see the external pressures that fitness athletes put on themselves for validation, for their identity, because it means so much to them. And it might just not mean that much to you. So when you compare it, it's not going to end out well. So you know, it's very important that when you do tune into people, you see a snippet of their lives. You see their, you know, when these fitness people do their live workouts, whether it be arbitrary or not, they are peaking for one hour 
to me, hey guys, uh, you know, they're looking happy with their workouts. They're more just concerned about their fucking Instagram views, hoping they're going to go to the explore page. On Instagram, I can promise you that. But you're literally just getting a snippet. And it's a very bad idea for you to compare your behind the scenes to their highlight reel, which is what uh, a lot of you guys are doing. So, you know, it's not, it's not about that. You can't be comparing to that. And there are people online that are saying they're reading a book a week and they're fucking not. There are people saying they're learning new languages and they're fucking not. The people that are going to struggle listening to this and this kind of podcast the most are probably parents. And I know parents are looking on at other people going, oh, it's all right for you, you haven't got kids. The main thing I want to draw to your attention as a, as a parent is you're doing something arguably more important than anyone else. You are bringing up a child, making sure they stay fed, slept, alive. You're scul- sculpting the life of a, a soon-to-be adult, a future generation. And when parents look at all these fucking youngsters doing their workouts and hitting their steps or whatever, it can be very demoralizing. And again, I feel parents get very sidetracked from the entire thing. You doing one basic workout a week and spending the other six days just focusing on bringing up your kid, you're doing great. That's amazing, right? To beat yourself up that you're not doing a daily fucking workout with the influencers that you subscribe to is moronic and then you're taking it personally that you're not looking like fucking shreddy kruger and that you haven't got abs you're bringing up a fucking child for fuck's sake and so many of these things are are being overlooked and this isn't a productivity contest this isn't uh you know a bout of time where we get to the end they go right covid's gone everyone take your tops off let's see how which one of you did the best um and really the the kind of idea behind this podcast today was to get people to realize that there's only one thing you really need to do when training from home and that's that's to do your best and doing that with minimal equipment you could probably do better to get something involved like a trx or a band you're only going to make your best even better you know you want to make make sure there's something there that you can work towards something quantifiable and stop seeking arbitrary workouts if you know how to train then fucking train and if you don't get some help because when you got behind the wheel of a car learning to drive when you're younger it was apparent you didn't know what you were doing You employed an expert for a short period of time to upskill you on how to do it. Now, if you're not going to choose me and my academy, choose someone else. Pick a local personal trainer that's potentially struggling. Pick someone who's obviously gone out of business, a family friend or whatever it is, because people are drowning at the moment. People don't know how to run a business and PTs are evidently the worst at it by looking at their, you know, what they're getting up to on Instagram and dropping their pants to give out free workouts as if someone's just going to turn up and be like, hey, let me give you some money because I really valued your free workouts. It's bullshit. But get someone to partner up with you and to and to help you with it. You know, to, to summarize on all of that, gyms might not be back for a while. It's important that we create some kind of environment at home that we can train in. Try not to make it arbitrary exercise where we're just jumping around like fucking idiots. Let's have some kind of training in it. You know, some kind of squat variant, some kind of hip thrust variant, some kind of core work, some kind of push. Buy something so you can have some kind of pull. You know, gyms probably aren't going to be the same for a while. Make sure that with our added time that we are spending on social media, that we're not just exposing ourselves to the fucking 0.1% of people that are just going to demotivate us all the time. There's more going on behind the scenes. You can't compare yourself to someone that has different values to you. Like I said, Michael Jordan only really valued winning. Everything else fell by the wayside. And ultimately, the, what we want to do is get through this this time in isolation and be the happiest we can possible. Your values aren't going to match the people you follow on Instagram. They need to be shredded for their self-worth. You probably need to have some item of junk food every day to, to feel great and to fit in and to enjoy a bar of chocolate with your wife or your husband. And... As long as we are armoured with this mindset of not being comparative to all these people we're exposing ourselves to, we're going to be in a much better position. And ultimately, we need to do the best with what we what we can, what we have, not to you know, if you're not to beat yourself up like so many parents are. You shouldn't be struggling as a parent to exercise. You should be being pragmatic and going, I can hit one or two workouts a week. I can do my best with my calories. I can do my best with my exercising. But ultimately. You sitting on your laptop doing your work from home is more important. Ultimately, you raising your child is more important. And yeah, I don't want people to be left deflated because I feel that's what a lot of people are feeling right now. So yeah, that's kind of just some of the thoughts that I had today with regards to home training. And hopefully that's going to motivate you guys to opt out of a lot of these people you follow on Instagram, but also at the same time to maybe bolster up what you are using at home 
and not to rest on the laurels of this notion that gyms can open soon because the people in charge are more concerned about their job titles and not getting the blame for whatever happens than they are you getting back to fitness so thank you very much for listening uh if you guys are on youtube make sure you subscribe if you're listening on a podcast make sure you subscribe um yeah go to jamesethacademy.com if you need anything from me always a pleasure never a chore catch you later in the next podcast